North American troops landed in Puerto Rico in 1898. Two years later, Charles Allen, first North American civilian governor, complained that there were too many Puerto Rican laborers and poor and not enough men of capital. The corporations soon arrived, and by 1930, they already owned more than half of the land. Displaced from the land by the thousands, the small farmers went to work, planting and harvesting sugarcane. By 1937, unemployment had reached 37%. The Puerto Rican people, now landless, jobless, and uprooted, became what the planners called excess population. The North American governor, Blanton Winship, approved in 1937 law number 136 legalizing sterilization. Based on the principles of eugenics, which advocated the breeding of the fit and the weeding out of the unfit, namely the poor and non-white, these laws came, in Winship's words, to fill the urgent need to avoid the menace of the ever-growing population. And now our Caribbean report. Puerto Rico, a beautiful little island with a big problem. Today, April 30th, 1945, Chief of the U.S. Tariff Commission, Mr. Dorfman, has suggested the migration of one million Puerto Ricans as part of a plan to reduce the population problem on the island. One third of all Puerto Rican women have been sterilized. So common is the method that it is simply known as la operación. Sterilization has been pushed really internationally as a way of population control. And there is a difference between population control and birth control. Birth control exists as an individual right. It's something that should be built into health programming. It should be part and parcel of choices that people have. And when birth control is really carried out, people are given information and the facility to use different kinds of modalities of birth control. While population control is really a social policy that's instituted with the thought in mind that there are some people who should not have children or should have very few children, if any at all. A whole series of catastrophic images were created about the population in Puerto Rico, which made you think it was a place teeming with people climbing like ants on each other's backs. At that time, there were about 654 people per square mile in Puerto Rico. Most of the people that left landed in Manhattan, where the population density was then about 90,000 per square mile. working in Puerto Rico in the medical school in those years, you know, the decade of 1960 to 1970. And one of the things that seemed pretty obvious to us then was that Puerto Rico was being used as a laboratory, and it was being used as a laboratory for the development of birth control technology. AID's population officer in 1977, Dr. Richard T. Ravenholt, said that if U.S. goals were met, one-fourth of the world's women would be sterilized to prevent revolutions that would interfere with the financial interest of multinational corporations. Ese es el plan genocida, lo que se está planteando para Puerto Rico. October 31, 1974. Today in the United Nations, Puerto Rican independence leaders accused United States imperialists of carrying out a genocidal plan in Puerto Rico. And now, Particularly, sterilizations are markedly on the increase in the United States. And if we look at where they're on the increase, or on whom I should say they're on the increase, it's mainly minority women, that is black, Native American, and Hispanic women. And poor whites, 
especially in depressed areas where there is very high unemployment. At this point in time, where abortion rights are under such tremendous attack that the government is no longer funding abortions for women who cannot afford them, sterilizations are still being paid for by the government and are on the increase. It appears that sterilization as a solution to the so-called excess population in the United States is following the model set up in Puerto Rico.